and um, I mean, but some people would argue they would say, well, when I sit down at the piano, you know, I, I could do that too. I mean, mm -hmm. why do you have to write for for uh, cellos and, <laughs> and violins and tubas and French horns uh -huh. and, and and percussion? What is what is that? Well, I mean, you know, the the orchestra, the symphony orchestra, uh, to me. And just for my purposes, is, to me, it's like one of the, it's the most effective, is the is the best way for me to to uh, create dramatic scenarios. You know, just because you have so many colors, you know, mm -hmm. you can choose from. You know, you have the woodwinds, the the strings, the brass, the the percussion. All of these, you know, have different sounds, and you know, you can just mix up these sounds and create these new dramatic scenarios, you know, mm. that, and a melody can be presented in such a way that it's really effective, you know, uh, this, you know, <laughs> you know, sounds really great on the piano, but when you take a bassoon up there, you know, it has this urgency, this, mm -hmm. you know, that can only be gotten by the bassoon, you mm -hmm. know, so, and they balked at that C they, yeah. when it was first played. They, really? they, yeah, they balked. They said, "Well, that's too high. The, the bassoon doesn't play that high." Yeah. And they said, "Oh, this is this is hard. This is difficult." And, they, and there was always a, a, a sense of uh, strain in the air uh, at that opening note. Yeah, yeah. Wait, uh, you, yeah. I mean, it's nothing yeah, now to players yeah. now, but then it yeah. was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing that's like required, you know. Literature and um, bassoon. Yeah. Know, but, uh, yeah, but the bassoon can only make it sound like it sounds on that. Right. That's, you know, the power of an orchestra, you know. Um, you know, you can have a chord like a. It sounds good on the piano, but when you put it on strings, consordino mm -hmm. sounds really lush. You have to tell everybody what consordino is. Oh, consordino means. Uh, sordino is like the mute yeah. of the string, and con is with. Yes. So with the mute, uh, and um, and it dampens out like kind of the high frequencies of the um, the high partials, I guess, of the of the sound of the string to make it sound really velvety and, and round and, and soft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you ever do sutasto with that? Yeah, maybe. You know, that's that's kind of a similar sound, mm -hmm. but but. Uh, not quite as a, as exaggeratedly soft, and, mm -hmm. you know, but it's still yeah. I, I think I use Soltasto in um, the Voices of Angels somewhere. I remember writing that. So know? tell us about that. That was the piece that you had written for the uh, the uh, massacre out. Yeah, and was premiered at at the end of uh, uh, last year. Was it? Uh, ex almost exactly a year ago. Okay. Uh, April 24th. Um, well, I have to brag about that a little bit. That was exhilarating. <laughs> wow. It was you. exhilarating yeah. uh, to, have, to have the orchestra, all those forces, the orchestra, the master crowd. How many voices? About 110. 110 voices and soloists. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us what the, uh, we're talking about the excellence factor. We keep going back to the fact that your upbringing was listening to all different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. You grew up at a time when all different kinds of music converged. Mm -hmm. And so you're a product of that time. But, you know, there's, to me, I'm, and I'm still uh, getting to this and, and, and pushing you with this and how you, how you develop, how you develop and how, what, what is it about you? What is it in you that says, well, you know, I'd like to write a piece for oratorio <laughs> for 110 voices and orchestra uh, and, and soloists. Yeah, I think it was a suicidal tendency. And yeah, was it wasn't. <laughs> that piece damn near killed me. You know, um, that How did was, it come about? Well, um, I got the commission to write um, this piece for the Master Chorale. They wanted a piece. They didn't specify. They didn't specify anything. They, it was like a blank slate. It's like mm -hmm. how, how long it was, um, how big the orchestration was, what the text was, what the subject matter what the style of writing was, was all left up to me. Wow. You know? is, that a, is that unusual? Yeah, that was very unusual. I was, and great, you know, it was really, um, 
Well, it's unusual for me. It may not be unusual for someone like John Adams or, you know, Tan Dunn, who oh, just their name factor would, you know, be enough for an orchestra. But for me, there's, it usually comes with some sort of uh, attachment. Well, can you make it, you know, like this or like that, you know? But this was, hey, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And however you want to do it, you know? However long you want to have to write it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I did was I wrote this, I took the text. It was um, a collection of poetry from this book called I Never Saw Another Butterfly, which is poetry written by children in the Terrazin concentration camp, mm -hmm. which was basically a camp that was uh, used by the Nazis to fool um, the world community at large to, into thinking that they weren't really harming the Jews, because they would let artists and musicians and let Jewish culture kind of flourish there. Even mm -hmm. still, you know, the place was intended for like maybe five, 6,000 people, but they would stuff like 50,000 people wow. in there. Wow. And, and then they would um, ship them off to Auschwitz or Dachau or Bergen-Belsen if they didn't die from typhus there. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and on the days where the Red Cross would visit, you know, they would dress everybody up all of a sudden and the people would have a little more leniency. They, you know, have people walking around, uh, you know, uh, just... It, it, would, it was like a big scam, basically. And then mm -hmm. back to s screwed up living conditions as usual when the, when the Red Cross left. But why did that touch you? Why, because why? the poems, when you read them, are powerful. Because they were written by children. And the thing that was really remarkable to me about this poetry was that even how, can I curse? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Even how fucked up the situation was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, um, they, the children still saw beauty in things. Mm. You know, uh, they saw a positive thing. They saw hope, you mm -hmm. know. And um, that really moved me, you know. Uh, because what it represents is a human, the, the, uh, the resistance of the human being to lose its dignity, you mm -hmm. know, um, in the face of really terrible situations, horrific, horrific situations. Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Yeah. So I mean, there's one poem that was really beautiful. Uh, the one from which the title of the collection is taken. It's called the Butterfly. You know, and I kind of treated that one impressionistically, you know, because I thought of a butterfly flying through forests and stuff. Mm -hmm. I started off with this motive. Uh... Like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then Luciana Souza sang it beautifully. Yes, she did. You know. But, uh, wow, I don't, I wish I had the score in front of me. I don't remember a lot of it. Oh, oh. Kinda, has it been talking about performing it again? Yeah, I think they're going to perform it um, in a couple of years, and they also want to commission me to write something else. Beautiful. So I, don't, I haven't even thought about what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the excellence factor, you there's a uh, I remember being on stage with you, uh, rehearsing the orchestra, and you're supposed to hear every note. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're supposed to hear every note, but I know that every note, uh, even though you could sit down and play your sketch, mm -hmm. you have the orchestration memorized too, or that's the feeling that I get, that you, you see what the flutes are doing, you see what the, what the, what the clarinets and the oboe and English horn and the bassoon and the French mm -hmm. horns are doing, and what the strings are doing, and you, and you oh no, that's an A flat over there. <laughs> I mean, is that? Are you seeing it? I mean, can you hear? I mean, do you do you remember it? I yeah, guess that's yeah, I'm pretty saying. much I do. I try to know everything that I'm writing. You know. Well, yeah, but I mean, yes, of course. I, that's why I said the sketch. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember sketches. Yeah. I say, okay, this is the sketch. 